Welcome. This is a short tutorial to help you get started with the Python programming language. We will be creating a retro chatbot. So I'll show you for example if I hit run, it says, ah, bright lights, who got me out of sleep mode? What is the name of this uh, user? So I'm just going to put in a random name, I'm going to put in Michael. I used to have a dog called Michael. It ran away. So sad. Do you like sleeping too? Uh, I'm going to say, not really. What is it with humans? Way too much energy. You look fit. Do you play sport? Uh, yes, I play... Uh, basketball. Yeah, I guess basketball is good if you like baskets, or if you're really tall. Well, I'd better be getting back to bed. No point talking too much when one could be resting. And that's it. So obviously, if I'd put a different sport, it would have responded differently, or if I'd uh, said yes that I like sleeping, it would have responded differently as well. So you can see uh, it's quite simple, and by having the chatbot ask us the questions rather than the other way around, um, it lets us create something that sounds quite sophisticated in just a few lines of code. I'm sure you've all had the chance to chat with uh, one of the modern large language models, such as ChatGPT. And uh, these are very, very complicated, uh, incredibly impressive, and they use neural networks to train on really large data sets and produce some pretty impressive results. Now, that's not a uh, very good match for a beginner Python project where we're going to be creating everything ourselves from scratch in just a few lines of code. So uh, we are going to be making a retro chatbot. Uh, so early chatbots from, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. Uh, usually had, uh, were looking for certain keywords that the user was saying. So this is the type of chatbot that we are going to be making in our project. Before you get started on this project, to make it a little bit more fun, I'd like you to have a think about what sort of personality you'll give your chatbot. A lot of modern chatbots have uh, very neutral personalities. They're trying to just be informative and give information, whereas our one we're trying to have a little bit of fun with. So feel free to make it cheerful or bitter or sarcastic or arrogant. I'm probably going to make mine lazy and sleepy and a bit grumpy. So for this project, we're going to be using a free online Python environment called Trinket. If you just Google search the word Trinket, you'll get there quite easily. And this is a really fantastic uh, environment for learning basic Python. Once you create more professional things, you'll want to move on to installing Python on your computer. But just as a simple web-based solution, this is very nice. So if you go up, or if you look up the top here, you can see that there's a sign up and login. You can simply sign in with your Google account, it's probably the easiest way. And uh, then you will be able to just click on whatever your username is here and go to New Trinket and select Python at the top here. Before you get started writing any Python code, there are a couple of things to know. First of all, if you click on this button here and click on a larger font size, it may be easier for you to read. Another thing is that the free version on this website sort of has Python 2 and 3 all mixed in together, and we want to be writing in Python 3 at this stage. So if you go down here and copy and paste this line of code, and put that at the top of your program, then it will force the uh, computer to process it in Python 3, which is what we want. Um, another thing to remember with Trinket is that you, it does not autosave, so you need to click on the save button as often as you can, uh, because you really don't want to lose any work. When you've finished a program, you can click on share, link, and copy this link if you would like to share your program with somebody else. Let's go ahead and get the computer to introduce itself. This is a good opportunity to establish the personality of your chatbot. Mine, as I said before, is going to be a little bit sleepy and grumpy and lazy. 
So let's go with that. Now the way that you get the computer to uh, print out some text onto the screen is to use the print function. So if I type in print and in the brackets I put a number for example like 6, it will print the number 6 out onto the screen. If I put text like hello, I need to put uh, quotation marks around it, otherwise it will think it's a variable. What do I mean by a variable? Just so we know. A variable is like a little cup with a name that you can store something in. So let's say I had a variable called hello and I stored the number 6 in it. And then here if I printed hello, the computer would go and look for what is stored in hello, which would be 6, and it would be print 6. So to know that I want to actually print a piece of text, I have to put quotation marks around it, and we call this a string. So what sort of strings do we want our chatbot to print at the start? Well, mine, like I said, is going to be waking up. So I might uh, start with... Ah, uh, and uh, bright lights. So if I press run here, that will be the first thing that comes up. Now if I would like the chatbot to pause just a tiny bit between sentences, I can import a module called time. And this will give us some extra functions. So to go into the time module and get a function called sleep, I would write time.sleep. And then in the brackets I need to put how many seconds. So if I said, let's say just one second, and then I will print something else here. And maybe we can sleep again after this. And those pauses will just make it a little bit more realistic. So you can see if I take this, if I take this out and hit run, it all just comes up at the same time. Whereas if I do it this way, the first one comes up and then the second one comes up a second later. So that is my introduction. So go and write your introduction and think about the personality that you would like your uh, robot to have or your chatbot to have and try and weave that in there. Try and enjoy it, make it funny in some way. Before we go any further, I thought it would look very nice to have the text come out printed letter by letter, sort of like someone was typing on a typewriter, uh, instead of having it just come out as chunks, as blocks. So I've put in the video description a little function that I'd like you to put in here, and you can just paste it in here, and it creates a function called TW for typewriter. I'm lazy, so I called it TW instead of typewriter. But if we put that there and then change, use that function instead of print and hit run, you'll see that it prints letter by letter. And I'll just quickly go over how this works. So when we type in TW uh, bright lights, it the R bright lights, this string, gets passed into this function with the name text. And then what happens is it prints out a blank line and then goes through every single letter in the text that got passed in, prints the letter, waits or sleeps for a very short amount of time, and then goes and prints the next letter, and then sleeps for a very short amount of time, etc. And then when it gets to the end of the line, there's another one second delay and a blank line pasted in. So you can actually play around with this to get it the exact way that you would like. You could increase the sleep time, for example, to make it uh, slower or faster. You could increase or decrease the amount of sleep time at the end. You could get rid of or increase the number of uh, extra lines that are at the start or the end. But so that's just we've created a function and now we can use it. Make sure that you type TW and not print, because if you type print you'll just use the normal print function. So the next thing I would suggest would be to uh, get the computer to ask the user's name. 
and uh, then when the, it responds to the user, it can use that name in the response. So let me show you what I'm going to do, and then you can choose, you can do yours a little bit differently if you like. So I'm going to say typewriter. Uh, I'm going to make mine a little bit funny, so I'll say, what is the name of this loser, uh, I mean user, because loser sort of rhymes with user, so he's trying to save himself, uh, the chatbot, from being rude. And, um, and then we actually want the user to be able to type in an answer. Now the way that you get the user to type in an answer is to use the input function, and inside the brackets here, you can put a string of what sort of prompt you want typed out. We're just going to put this symbol, and I'll show you what this looks like up here. So here comes the question, and I think just having this printed out when the question is asked sort of looks quite retro, sort of like those text adventure games from the 70s and 80s. Now, if I type in something over here, I'll just type in a name, it's not my name, but I'll type in a name. Uh, we typed in the name, but we want that to be stored into a variable. So we can, like I said before, a variable is just, you can think of it as a cup that uh, holds a particular uh, string or number, um, and it has a name on the cup so we don't lose it. So my name, I'm just going to call it username. Uh, you don't have to call yours username, you could call it name or answer or whatever you like, but I'm going to store mine in a variable called username. Now, we can use this when we're responding. So we could say, uh, again, I'm sticking with the, the humor aspect here. Uh, I used to have a dog called... Uh, now, we can join this string to the string in username. So we can say this string here, plus, so the plus symbol, when it's put between two strings, just joins them together or concatenates them together. So let's try that. And while we're doing it, I'm just going to show you a quick trick. If you don't want the earlier parts of your program to run because you're just working on this part down here, you can put three quotation marks either side, and it basically turns all of this into one long string instead of code. A little bit like commenting it out. All right, let's run that. I'll say Frank. I used to have a dog called Frank. Okay, I would like to add a little bit more on the other side, so I'll put another plus. Um, and uh, I'll probably just put yawn like this. And then what I might do to make it seem a little bit more realistic is I might do a time.sleep for two seconds and then we'll have a bit of a joke follow-up comment, which will be it ran away. So sad. So you're there thinking, oh, he's going to say something nice and then no, it's just more depressing <laughs> sadness. Yeah, let's try that out. Okay, I think that's that's looking quite realistic. So I'm happy with that section there. Uh, you don't have to say, I have a dog called whatever. You could say, oh, such and such name, that's a terrible name, or that's a great name, or oh, I think my aunt used to be called that, or whatever you like. Have, have some fun with it. I'm going to take these bottom three quotation marks and put them here, and that way when we do our next section, this code that uh, I've already completed, isn't going to run and isn't going to to hold us up. So the next thing I would like to do is have the computer ask us a yes or no question, and then it can respond to us based on whether we said yes or no. Now, just a note, you might have noticed I've been typing these comments here with a little hash at the start. That basically means the computer won't treat this as code, it's just a comment for me and my organization. It's like a heading so I know what's, what's going on. So how do I get the computer to ask a yes no question? Well, to ask the question is easy. So I can say, um, do you like sleeping too? 
and then I'd like an opportunity for the user to respond. So I will say input like this with our little prompt that will be printed on the screen. And I would like to save whatever the user said into uh, an answer. And I'm just, I said username before, so I'm just going to say user sleeping. So whatever text the user enters will be saved in this variable called user sleeping. Now, we can respond based on what the user said. So for example, I could say if, if uh, user sleeping equals equals yes, then Oh, TW, I'm doing the typewriter. Um, I'm glad we agree on something. And then I could say ELIF, that means else, if that's not the case, then check this second thing. Check whether user sleeping equals equals no. And then you could say, um, what is it with you humans? Now, please don't do the same thing that I'm doing here. You could type in anything that you like based on the personality of your uh, chatbot here. So much energy. Okay. Now, a final thing I can do is I can put an else on the end. And that's if none of these other things were true. I can say, I don't understand. In this case, I'm going to say, you're mumbling. So he's blaming it on the user for not being able to understand you. Um, and then I'll just say, let's move on. Okay, so let's test this out. So I'm going to type in yes. I'm glad we agree on something. Okay, so that seemed to work. And if I say no, what is it with you humans? And if I type in something else, okay. So that's working pretty well. But the problem is, is that when you have a user typing something in, you can't control what they write and there may be these little variations. So let's have a look at some of the things that might go wrong. So one thing that could go wrong is the user might actually type it in in capitals like this and it won't recognize it. So an easy way that we can fix this is we can just take this input that is going to be saved into user sleeping here and say dot lower and that will convert it into lowercase. So if the, I really recommend you do this on probably not the name because you're not doing any if statements and you might want to capital on the start of the name makes sense. But for these types of questions, I would say um, that will fix all of those problems. Uh, the second thing is people might type in something like, yes, I do. And again, because that didn't exactly equal yes, it won't pick up from it. So do you remember when we talked earlier about the chatbot searching for particular keywords? Let's make it so that if it simply finds the word yes within the answer, that it will trigger. So the way that we do that is instead of saying user sleeping equals equals yes, we can say if yes in user sleep, user sleeping. So user sleeping is a variable that will hold the string that they said. So for example, it might be yes, I do. And then if yes in uh, yes, I do, then it will trigger this. And we'll do the same thing down here. We'll say if no in user sleeping, then uh, we'll trigger this one. Let's test that out. Okay, good. So that's working a lot better and it will be a lot more robust with uh, users entering things you might not expect. 
A final way that you can make it a little bit safer is to think about some different things that people might say. They might say yes or yeah or nah or yep or nope. Now, nope would actually be covered by this because no is in the word nope, but for some other ones, we can add things like this. We can say, I might have to make it a little bit smaller here, but we can say if yes in user sleeping or yeah in user sleeping. Now, just to be very careful, you can't say if yes or yeah in user sleeping because yes in user sleeping gets boiled down to true or false. And this also gets boiled down to true or false. If you just say yes or yeah, it will always be true. And just trust me, it's not what you want. So make sure you do it like that. And also please make sure that you do it all in lowercase because yeah with a capital is not possible because remember we are converting it to lowercase up there. All right, so let's try this out. Yeah, and that's working so much better. We might do the same thing with no, we might say or, nah, in user sleeping. Remember, we don't need nope because that's already a no in nope. And I think that's working pretty well. Let's move on to a more tricky question. All right, so yes, no questions are quite easy and you can add a few more like that if you wish, but I think it's a lot more interesting to ask an open-ended question. So this one I'm actually going to uh, paste and just explain the code because I, I think typing it will be quite boring on the, on the screen. Now, you don't have to do it as, as much code as this. You absolutely do not have to. Um, I'm just going to quickly comment this out. There we go. So we've got an open-ended question. So typewriter, you look fit, do you play any sports? And then we're saving the input converting it to lowercase and, and storing the string that the user has entered in a variable called user sports. Now, you only need a few of these. I just went a little bit crazy because I'd like my chatbot to be as realistic as possible. So I've covered many different uh, sports or responses that you might get in Australia, especially someone might say footy, for example. Um, so I've said, if basketball is in user sports, then print yeah, I guess basketball is good if you like baskets or if you're really tall. And if footy is in there, uh, it says, uh, I'm always confused when people say footy. I mean, are they talking about soccer, AFL or rugby, uh, which are three different types of footy in Australia. Um, else, if soccer is in user sports, uh, then say soccer. Don't you mean football? Sheesh, because I know uh, a lot of people <laughs> think that we shouldn't call it soccer in Australia because most of the world calls it football. And so I've basically got responses on all of these different sports, and this can be a lot of fun. Um, yours doesn't have to be a question about sports. They could ask you about movies or music or whatever. And if you can think about a lot of possible keywords that the user might say in the answer and think of some responses that match up with the personality of your chatbot, uh, then I think it creates a really engaging experience for the user. I'll just point out a couple of things here. Um, there's a... One down here where I said, um, else if um, don't, or don't, or hate. Now, those are some things I thought that the user might say, I don't really like sports, or I hate sports. And I thought they might forget the apostrophe as well when they do that. So I'm just sort of guessing. This might not always come off, but it might be useful. And you'll notice there that the chatbot says, wow, so negative. And then there's a pause. And then the punchline of the joke, I like you, because there the chatbot is quite grumpy. Um, and don't forget at the end there, there's an else, which is if none of these are in the user's response, which is quite unlikely, uh, then say something that maybe just pretend that the chatbot is just ignoring what you're saying and it's, it's musing to itself, right? Now, just a, an, a quick note, make sure that the first if statement is an if, and then all of these should be elif, and then the last one should be else. If you accidentally put an if in the middle here somewhere, you're gonna create some strange bugs 
with the else, trust me, you, you really don't want that. So remember, it's if this is the case, if that's not the case, then we go on to the second one, check this one. So as, as soon as one of these is found in the uh, text that the user in, inputted, this will run and then none of the other ones will even be checked, okay? And we have to think about the order here because if someone types in I like basketball and um, tennis, for example, the basketball comes first, so it's going to detect the basketball, talk about the basketball, and then not even check for the tennis. So um, make sure that you have them in an order that you would like the, the most likely ones maybe at the top or the ones that if multiple ones are mentioned you would like to be uh, triggered first go at the top. That's really, really important. Again, don't, please don't feel like you have to put so many options here. <laughs> I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, if you would like to spend some time and, and make it um, really realistic, you can. Now you can add as many questions as you like, but I'm going to wind it up and put an ending, I think. So in here, ending. So my ending is it's going to pause for a few seconds, time.sleep, and then it's gonna say, well, I'd better be getting back to bed, sticking with its personality again. No point making too much, talking too much when we could be resting. Uh, you can say anything else you like, have some fun there. Feel free to add um, any more questions and uh, don't forget to go back and undo these uh, strings that you've created to comment things out because otherwise those parts of the program will not run. Okay, so let's talk about some other things that you could do to improve this project. Uh, one of the things you could do is you could create some random phrases. So for example, you could, uh, near, the, near the top of the program, you could have something called, a variable called random phrases, and you could make a list. So a list in Python you just create by making these square brackets. And inside I can put a few different strings of things it might say. So if it's an Australian chatbot, it might say, crikey. Um, it might say, I'm really getting bored. <laughs> or, uh, can we just end this conversation? <laughs> Question mark. And then what you could do is you could print randomly one of these sayings at some point. So you could import the, import the random module. So randomness is not necessarily, or it's not built into Python unless you specifically say at the top of the program you want to use the random module. And then maybe at the end here, you could print one of these random uh, random sayings or phrases. And the way you would do that is you would say TW and you would then say random.choice from, what did I call the list? Random phrases. And you could use this in, in many different ways. Let's, let's test this out, see if it works. So it said, I'm really getting bored that time. If we run it again. Yep, and so it's, ra it's randomly choosing from, from that list. Okay, another thing that you could do, which I won't go into here, but you can look up on the internet, is uh, you can import a library called DateTime. I think, I think that's correct. And then from that library, you can actually retrieve it. It's, it seems like there's some weird things you have to type, but you can look this up online, like I said. Um, you can find out the hour or the day, and you can use that in your 
phrases here. So you could say, for example, oh, it's already three o'clock or five o'clock, but it will be use the time on your computer to actually discover that information. Or, oh, it's Friday. I never chat to people on Friday, etc. So I've changed my mind. I paused the video there. <laughs> Just I'll quickly show you um, because it is a little bit weird. If you look it up, you might not know if you're seeing the right thing. But basically, to get the day of the week is this monstrosity of code. And to get the hour time, like four or six or whatever, uh, it is this. So if I hit run, it will print today and hour time. So Monday and five. And that's true. It is Monday and it is 5.16 p.m. <laughs> so uh, etc. Okay. Uh, anyway, I hope that helps. You don't have to include any of these, but you can play around with it if you wish. Enjoy your project and don't forget to hit save.